It's time now for Perspective. In the past 25 years since Hong Kong was handed over to uh, China from British rule, the self-government and freedoms that it was originally promised have gradually been eroded. After declaring only Beijing-backed candidates can stand in elections for the territory's leader in 2014, a controversial extradition law in 2019 that led to a series of mass protests, and then an equally controversial national security law, becoming Hong Kong's uh, youngest elected legislator in 2016, my guest today, Nathan Law, is a now-exiled activist from the territory whose recently published book recounts China's growing authoritarianism in the territory. Nathan, thank you so much for joining us on Perspective today. Hello, good morning. So before we get to your book, you've talked about how you grew up in a relatively apolitical family, how you studied in pro-Beijing uh, schools. What changed your mind? How exactly did you become an activist? Um, there, there were several things that uh, completely changed my mind and made me, um, well, be involved in political activism. Um, the first one was definitely my first involvement in attending um, the Tiananmen Massacre Vigil, which uh, it, uh, it took place in Hong Kong every year. Um, and it stopped um, in in 2020 because of uh, Beijing's um, um, disapproval. And the other would definitely be the stories of Liu Xiaobo, um, the Chinese uh, Nobel Peace Prize laureate um, that he advocated for the uh, democracy and human rights in mainland China. Um, this story really inspired me and remind me how important freedoms and democracy are. So it, it really led me into the arena of political activism. So, Nathan, your your book, your recently published book, Freedom, How We Lose It and How We Fight Back, was, was published last year. What led you to move on from the stage of, of being an act activist and then to ultimately writing a book? Um, what I've been through for the past few years um, is actually resonating the deterioration of Hong Kong's freedom. In 2014, I was a student leader um, leading the protest of Umbrella Movement which it was a civil disobedience actions occupying the major run race of Hong Kong for 79 days. And then I was elected as the youngest lawmaker in history of Hong Kong in 2016 at the age of 23. In 2017, I was unseated uh, due to Beijing's intervention and persecution. And also I was jailed for my participation in the peaceful assembly in 2014. And in the year 2020, I had to leave the city because Beijing implemented the national security law and I, um, I foresaw, foresaw that I would be um, in the wanted list under the law. Um, so we could see like from a prominent uh, protest leader to a legislator to an inmate and to an exile activist, um, these, uh, these stories really reflect um, the political diversity in Hong Kong has been dramatically reduced and also the, the, the uh, tension and, um, and, and the political persecution has been severely grown. Um, so I think writing that story down really helps people who have no prior knowledge to Hong Kong or China issue have a better understanding and read a quick look on uh, what is happening. And by understanding my story, they will um, understand what happened to Hong Kong um, fairly quickly. Have uh, Chinese authorities reacted to the publication of your book? Um, I have not heard the direct comment to the book, um, but They've been launching um, severe online attacks on me, including a lot of scam mails, a lot of threats um, to my personal safety, and also a lot of um, fabricated stories and, and stigmatization campaign. So um, uh, I would not be surprised if they have publicly criticized the book. And also the book, um, I think for now, it is, it's not allowed to publicly like being sold in Hong Kong. and. I believe all the libraries, including the ones in school and uh, public libraries, um, they definitely are not going to display the book and they're not going to allow it to, to be existed in, in those areas. It's a tough choice, Nathan, facing uh, any activist in a, in a repressive regime. But what ultimately made you leave Hong Kong? Um, I left Hong Kong a um, few days before the implementation, implementation of the national security law, which the law criminalized free speech and target um, prominent activists. And there have been dozens of these democratic campaigners being trialed now and predictably they will go to jail because of the law. Um, so I, well, uh, I foresaw that coming and I think it's important 
that we have a voice on the international level because when we are in Hong Kong, we're unable to speak up against the government and criticize their policy. So that's the only way that um, I can continue to be active and be the voice of Hong Kong. And yeah, so I made that difficult choice. Uh, Nathan, it's been a tough several years for, for pro-democracy activists in Hong Kong, to say the least. Uh, we've seen several different waves of, of mass protests. Uh, what do you think the near future looks like for pro-democracy activists? Do you think that there's a risk that they lose steam, uh, given all of the things that they've had to deal with in the past several years? The short-term future is definitely grim. We've been seeing China um, becoming more and more authoritarian, and the world is um, being dominant by a lot of uh, agendas by the dictators. We've, we, we have been witnessing the war in Ukraine. And I think uh, for people who care about democracy, we've seen the democratic resection and really worried about the future of it. What has happened in Hong Kong is just one of the puzzles in this big um, global democratic resection. Um, but I believe that uh, for now, we, we, we've been paying more and more attention on the deterioration of freedom worldwide. And I think as long as we are determined and united, we are mass resources to push back these um, dictatorial regimes. Um, there can definitely be a brighter future for Hong Kong and for the rest of the world as well. What do you think is behind China's kind of gradual uh, reassertion of power over Hong Kong, especially under Xi Jinping, and especially because the situation uh, beforehand, where there was more autonomy, more freedoms, had kind of worked for so long? Um, the major reasons are. Um, First of all, Xi Jinping wants a mass power as much as possible. He's a power grip. Um, so he doesn't want Hong Kong to be autonomous anymore because he doesn't have to tell the world that we are moving toward a liberal direction. He is authoritarian. He's a strong dictatorial leader. He wants to prove that. So I think that's the first reason. And the second would definitely be um, by accusing um, the protests in Hong Kong initiated by foreign hostile forces, uh, China can mobilize these um, um, really hyper-nationalistic narrative and that uh, consolidates the control of the Chinese Communist Party and the leadership of Xi Jinping. Um, so for his personal and, of course, for the interest of the Chinese Communist Party, they've been manipulating um, the situation in Hong Kong and making sure that Hong Kong is getting more and more authoritarian and they can accuse what have happened in Hong Kong um, are triggered by foreign forces that they can use that to 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 um to kind of like unite that 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 um very hyper nationalistic um narrative. Nathan Law, that unfortunately is all we have time for today, but thank you so much for coming on the show today and best of luck to you in in the UK. Thank you so much.